The prairies of North America are the breadbasket of the continent. These vast plains stretch out under spectacular skies and are home to grazing cattle, bison, and horses. But something else stalks these grassy fields, a mysterious and deadly predator with a taste for flesh. The lungs were taken, the heart was taken out, and, and the leg was taken out. His left ear was missing. His rectum had been cut. And her genitals were gone and her ear was gone. So I knew it was a mutilation. Eyewitnesses describe a consistent pattern. The cattle's udder, ears, eyes, and other soft parts are cut out. Blood is drained, but there are no signs of tracks, animal or otherwise, surrounding the body. Mysterious stories of cattle killings have circulated for centuries, but they were little more than a curiosity until just 40 years ago. The really big case, the case that, that gained international attention, occurred in September of 1967 in Colorado. Stephen Kent, a sociologist at Canada's University of Alberta, has tracked this growing phenomenon, and he says it started with the killing of a mare. The horse was named Lady at the time, although the press uh, renamed her uh, to Snippy because of all the cuts that were on the horse's body. The night before her death, the three-year-old Appaloosa appeared healthy. She returned home to be fed after grazing in a pasture for the day. Come on, lady. Uh, the next night she didn't show up at her usual time. And the family went out and searched for her what they found would haunt them forever. They found her lying in the field with most of, of the skin on her neck and head removed. Upon examination, a local vet suspected foul play, but could not identify the killer. This account went international. So the snippy story became uh, really a, a stimulus for a lot of other accounts to start coming forward. Soon the police and veterinarians in Utah, Nevada, Colorado, and New Mexico were inundated with reports of the mutilation and killings of healthy cattle. Theories began to emerge about the killings. The first was that members of underground satanic or religious cults might be committing these heinous acts. The assumption is that uh, some groups, usually they get pinned on being satanic groups have mutilated animals in order to get either blood and or sexual parts that they would use in rituals. The second theory suggested that some unknown perpetrator, human or otherwise, committed these gruesome murders and left behind evidence of sophisticated technology. People would bring out Geiger counters and even if the animal itself were, uh, were not radioactive, they'd often find higher than expected areas of radioactivity in the area. Some farmers would talk about the fact that predators would not go near the dead carcass. There was something that was keeping them away. Occasionally you'd hear accounts about strange smells or an odd liquid that was found in the area and so on. In 1975, 200 incidents of mutilation were reported in Colorado. An increasingly fearful ranching community prompted a statewide investigation. That same year, the state of New Mexico began a similar inquiry. Special Agent Kenneth Rommel conducted hundreds of examinations before he revealed his controversial conclusions. Rommel held that the cause was entirely natural. The cattle killers, he said, were common predators and scavengers, coyotes, birds, and other wildlife. It is still the only official report on the public record, and most scientists agree with its conclusions. Be sure you're not dealing with natural causes, with, with naturally occurring spontaneous disease, with scavengers, with predation. Rule those things out before you ever start to consider any other possibilities. Dr. Nick Nation, a veterinary pathologist at Canada's University of Alberta, believes that most so-called mutilation cases may have a rational cause. I'm not saying that 
never have animals ever been mutilated by people that are mentally ill or sick in some way. What I am saying is I haven't seen it myself and I've looked at a hell of a lot of cattle at post-mortem. But experienced ranchers see this phenomenon as proof something strange is out there. You know why they took all this intestines out of that calf and you know the, the way they cut that calf across the rib cage is just perfect. Nice clean cut. Pure white calf and not a drop of blood anywhere in sight. Different to see something like that. I've been raised out in BC on a ranch where we deal with every kind of predator and I've seen about everything. Barb Campbell, a forensic investigator, was skeptical of the rancher's claims until she saw a mutilation case in the flesh. I don't spook easily, but I got spooked. I really, really got spooked because I knew that what was before me was not natural. Campbell believes that she has proof that the killer is not a known predator. They're not just torn, they're surgically cut. There's no sign of blood. Uh, any missing part is never found. There's no sign of a struggle. And uh, sometimes the animals are found in the most awkward positions that it's impossible for them to uh, be in. Heads bent back farther than the bone the neck can actually handle. Legs in opposite directions and it's just impossible for an animal to get like that. She believes the animals may have been tranquilized before being mutilated. It appears to me the animal is brought down instantly. In order to do that um, you can either you know shoot it with a a big gun, um, or you can uh, dart it. What methods are being employed? Barb Campbell believes the known mutilation carcasses across North America hide the extent of the problem. We're not hearing about all the cases because many times the rancher just buries the animal or burns the animal. Um, but uh, I mark this out so I can see a pattern here or look for a pattern and there seems to be the lower section here to the east and then it, it goes northwest and uh, what's particularly interesting is this line from Lloyd Minster's to St. Walberg so so far this seems to be a huge concentration this area up here in March of 2008 on a ranch near Lloyd Minster, Alberta, a prized bison bull named Frank fell victim to the mystery predator. And my dad had fed them bulls two days prior and Frank was alive and well. So something unusual happened there. Bison rancher Lee Benoit had never before seen an animal killed in this way. Sex organs were all cored right out. And, uh, and his gut was split right down the middle. Precision cut too, like it wasn't, it wasn't somebody with a hunting knife or anything like that. It was a very uh, skilled cut. The bizarre circumstances surrounding this killing deepened his suspicions. The scavengers hadn't gone near him. It was a little bit odd. There was no tracks, no tire tracks, no footprints of any kind anywhere near him. Mm. Deepening the mystery, the snow where the animal had fallen mysteriously melted and refroze into an odd-shaped pattern, much like a crop circle. It's the only trace left behind by whatever unidentified predator is committing these monstrous acts. Barb Campbell will gather physical traces that may identify the killer. Will the evidence point to some kind of alien presence? Monster Quest has also asked a cosmetic surgeon to try and replicate the cuts using the latest in laser technology. And local ranchers will also perform an experiment with a cow carcass, testing the surgical ability of local scavengers and predators. David Cook has seen firsthand the gruesome handiwork of the cattle killers. 
was perfectly smooth, no jagged edges. We have never ever seen something like this happen before. We'd like to find out the truth, what, what really did happen. Can we drag it or haul it, Steve? A cow suffering from a condition known as foot rot has been slaughtered. We're, we're gonna go over there by the dugout, but a little to the okay. west. David Cook and his neighbor Steve Lucci will use the opportunity to perform an experiment. They want to attract the local scavengers and show that they are not capable of making the clean and surgical cuts of the cattle killer. By tomorrow there should be some something eating on this animal. Some action. Yeah. We could have uh, bears, coyotes, maybe even timberwolves. The two ranchers set up motion detecting cameras to record the activity. In 24 hours, they'll come back and investigate the scavenger's reaction. Barb Campbell has found a fresh mutilation case to examine. The sudden and mysterious death of an 1,800 pound bison bull as this rancher puzzled. That farmer's yard is a clear view of this field. He'd have seen something if there was anything human. This program contains graphic images of slaughtered animals. Viewer discretion is advised. Monster Quest has journeyed to the remote plains of Western Canada to investigate what's killing the cattle of North America. In the late 80s, a swift and silent killer paid a visit to this ranch. I would say right now it's about uh, 52 years with cattle, so I think I know a little bit about them. Buck Scotton has seen dead cattle scavenged by the local wildlife, but this was no ordinary death. It was the 2nd of June, uh, 87, and I found, I went out, I always check my Yearnings, what, every third day. The carcass of this steer was unlike anything he'd seen before or since. The brush on the tail was cut off and thrown about 15 feet behind the animal. And then I got looking at the navel. The navel was cut out round, just the, just the skin taken out. And then I noticed the, this cut on the neck, side the neck, ahead of the shoulder was about a a seven inch cut, I would imagine. The hair around the wound appeared to be cut or shaved. That hair was cut right with the, the wound in the neck. And there's no better to do that, as far as I know. Scotton and his neighbors all agreed he should further investigate this grisly attack. Oh, there's probably eight or ten neighbors seeing this animal, and they, everyone figured it was tampered with, eh? So that's when I decided to take it to university. He drove the mutilated steer 100 miles to the veterinary department at Canada's University of Saskatoon. After examination, a vet determined the death was not unusual. Scott 